So the next thing we need to discuss is batteries to store this power and to use this power. Although you've seen videos um, where people hook things directly up to their solar panels and it does work, solar panels are meant to go into batteries first and then the power be used from the batteries. All right, solar panels are meant to uh, charge batteries, not to use the power uh, just directly to your devices, even though that does work. They should go into batteries first. These batteries that I am using are the Harbor Freight AGM sealed lead acid batteries. Um, for the cost, these this is a 35 amp hour. I think that works out to, uh, now we have to get into some technical stuff. You have amps times volts equals watts. Remember that. Whenever you're figuring out stuff, it uh, has to do with electricity and the solar here. It's amp times uh, volts equals watts. So if you, if you know the watts and you know the voltage, it would be watts divided by the volts will give you the amps. Okay, so that's the formula. So these batteries, I'm using AGM lead acid batteries because they're sealed, no maintenance. Um, they will not put off any hydrogen in your RV, motorhome, uh, van, conversion, whatever you're doing, your shed or whatever, unless you overcharge them and they get too overcharged. They do have a a valve on them somewhere that opens up to release the excess hydrogen gas if you do that. I do not have any problem using these in my van um, not vented outside because I do not charge my batteries inside the van. I set them out on the ground, I set my solar panels out on the ground where we're camping and I charge my batteries during the day. So that's it. So, so there's all different kinds of batteries out there. Um, People always say, oh my gosh, you could have got a 100 amp battery for the same cost as you paid for this 35 amp battery. So that's one reason why I'll pay more for the AGM battery, because they are made to have power running through them, be discharged, recharged, everything for a very long life. Okay, If you take care of these batteries and only discharge them 50% of the way, they will last you a thousand or more cycles. So, so once again, you can probably find uh, a lead battery or something like that that you're going to have to worry about some maintenance on it. Uh, might even off gas while it's discharging or whatever. But you might find a more powerful battery for less money. These batteries are very safe, and they're meant to be used for what I'm using them for. All right, we're back. Um, so now on your batteries, uh, these are resting charge. I haven't used these batteries for, gosh, more than a week now. So that's another good thing about AGM batteries is they hold their charge very well. They don't discharge by themselves very rapidly like other types of batteries and deep cycle batteries. These should be holding their charge. So let's get a reading on these batteries. Okay, and I am at 13.0, so that is about a fully charged uh, resting point. Let's get the other battery. And it's reading about 12.9, 13.0 also. So when these batteries are under, char uh, are under a charge, when I hook them up to the solar panels, they will run these batteries up usually to about 13.4, 13.5. Once again, I want to state, you should never discharge your batteries more than 50%. 50 and I will get into giving you an easy way to know when you've done that, okay? I'm going to hook them up in parallel so I can use the 70 amps, the 35 and the 35, okay? And that's simple. Some people run their batteries in series, what that does is keeps you the same amperage of one battery, but doubles the voltage. And I want to run a 12 volt system, so there's no reason to do that. So I'm going to hook the positive up to the positive here. And the next thing I'm going to get is the size of the cables I'm using. So when you get into the size of cables, this is not very thick. Like when you go look at your car battery, 
you see how thick that cable is in your car battery and that's because your car battery has to use a lot of amps all at once to turn that starter motor to start your car okay so think about and uh, worry about I guess the thickness of your your wire depends on how much current how many amps you're gonna draw at if any given time so that will melt your wires if you use too small and you're pulling too many amps but I'm not gonna pull that many amps I never am so I'm just gonna hook these up to parallel and I've been using this stuff now for about three months and I've had zero problem okay so now I have a 12 volt system we saw the reading about 13 um, 13 volts but I've doubled my amps okay and so you can add more batteries in parallel if you want if you need more storage and stuff like that all right the next thing we need to talk about is charge controllers the Harbor Freight 100 uh, watt chart uh, system with those four 25 watt panels comes with this 100 watt charge controller okay and some lights and stuff and some USB charging points and stuff like that obviously I've hooked up more than a hundred watts cannot use that both of the Harbor Freight tools solar system the 45 watt uh, come with these charge controllers but they have lights and uh, hook up points for 12 volt stuff to a USB point or whatever obviously I'm using more than 45 watts so this is the Harbor Freight 500 watt charge controller okay so I am I do have a hundred and possible 190 watts uh, running into that hub so 500 watts is going to handle that and that's what we're going to use okay all right so the next thing is is hooking up your charge controller into your system you do not this will stop uh, the solar panels from overcharging the batteries um, you definitely need to this is important hook up your charge controller to your batteries first do not hook your charge controller up to your solar first um, by hooking you, you need to give the power somewhere to go okay I've blown out one of my charge controllers by hooking it up to the solar first and the power had nowhere to go and the charge controller didn't like that so we're gonna hook up the charge controller in such a way that we're going to take the positive off of one battery and the negative off of the other battery and we just heard the charge controller beep and come on and it's reading 13.2 volts okay now the reason I hooked up the charge control the battery um, one point the negative point to one battery and the positive to the other battery is so that the current coming from the solar panels will charge through all the batteries I, I've, I've been told especially if you have more like a third a fourth a fifth battery in your system and you don't hook it up to the last battery the positive and the first battery the negative that the current may not flow through all the batteries in the parallel setup to keep the last battery charged okay so that's that's what we're doing so we can continue on here and we're now gonna plug the charge controller into our hub and let it charge the batteries even though my batteries are pretty charged but you can see how the voltage just jumped up to 14 14.4 14.5 and now dropping down it's sensing that there is a good charge in the battery so it's not throwing so much voltage you can see as we've been talking the Sun has now come across those panels are still not facing towards the Sun is still past them but the ones laying on the table are getting some solar and we still have three that are in the shade uh, the Sun is just coming over our house the backyard faces the west so the Sun will go that way and I will get uh, more solar as the day goes on okay shooting off the top of my head now we have a system hooked up uh, we have the possibility of hundred and ninety watts of uh, solar coming into this uh, the charge controller 
and charging our batteries which have a total of 75 I'm sorry 70 amps so we have to get into a little formula we have 190 watts of 12 volt DC power okay and we have 70 amps of 12 volt DC power so we need to convert them okay this is the first thing you're gonna to need to understand when you want to start hooking stuff up so I'm gonna to go to watts because that's easier I know I have a, a possibility of 190 watts of solar so we need to do this 70 amps and convert it to watts so once again I think I said earlier amps times volts equals watts so we know what the amps are we have 75 amps I'm sorry 70 amps times 12 equals but 10 times 70 is 700 and 2 times 70 is 140 so right so I was right so we have a we have 840 watts of power in these batteries okay so here comes the thing to save your batteries you only should use half of your power if you need more power buy more batteries okay so total I have 840 watts I'm gonna cut that in half right gives us 420 watts of power that I will use out of these before I let them recharge okay so to get more technical during the day and I'm gonna give you a system we're gonna plug in some stuff and use some current here so during the day though um, even though we write this let's let's say you only get 50 percent of your solar at any given time you're never gonna get 100 percent of that 190 watts okay so let's say that any given time when you have your solar panels facing the Sun and everything let's say we're gonna get a hundred watts out of that okay and we've drained our batteries that we're only going to use 420 watts we've used that okay so it's simple math while the Sun is out if you have a hundred watts of your hundred and ninety watts follow me here and you've drained 420 watts that's going to take about four hours right to charge your batteries right four out four hours times 100 watts is 400 okay so you, so it's going to take you about four hours a little more to charge your batteries back up during the day from what you used when the Sun went down but during the day while you have the solar power running into your batteries you can use more objects and use more current and turn on more things um, while the Sun is up because you're getting a constant flow and not draining your battery so quick hope that makes sense all right this next discussion um, takes a genius better than me with more specific tools on drawing current out of the battery and testing the current draw but I, but people ask me all the time how will I know when my batteries are half full and what to charge them so I've had some experience with these batteries now for about three months and my batteries when they're fully charged in a resting state um, not under current or whatever so like I unhook everything I take them in the van at night and we wanna you know watch TV and run a fan and some lights in our van um, I keep track of the voltage on my batteries and what I have found and what I've read and listened to other videos on YouTube is these type of batteries um, will have about 13.2 volts when they're fully charged and about 12.3 volts they will read when they're half uh, when they're half used up when they're half discharged okay so if you if you drain your batteries down to like 10 10 and a half volts they may be dead and you may not get a charge back okay I'm sure you can run these batteries down to maybe 11.7 volts or something like that maybe 11 and a half and still get them back 
just know you're damaging your batteries and uh, getting less life cycles out of your batteries before you're going to have to replace them. So, so it's just my experience that they do very well under load and they'll keep about a 12.6 volt under the load that I've been giving them for, for a lot of hours. And I'll get into specifics here um, after we hook up some more stuff. Thank you.